After a long time, we are starting with the series of planets from Venus. So now we have reached third house from Venus. Third house is a very important house. Of course, it's the house of Parakram. It's the house of Upadesh, not which you get, that which you give, right? The opposite of the third is the ninth, where you get from the Guru. And the third is where you give it to others, okay? So therefore, today we shall discuss what's the third from Venus doing in the chart, right? So therefore, you need to understand that the third from Venus has very crucial clues uh, when it comes to uh, relationship lessons and about advice that you can give others about relationships. Therefore, we need to see what's going on in the third house from Venus, okay? This is the newcomers, not from the ascendant, not from the moon. Wherever your Venus is, go three houses from there. So, for example, if your Venus is uh, in Scorpio, then you go Scorpio, Sagittarius, and Capricorn, right? So, the third house also, as I said, is the house of Parakram. It shows courage. So, it means the third house from Venus is a very important house when it comes to deciding to what extent do you have courage in uh, maintaining that relationship or any relationship in general? Why only one relationship? Uh, especially, especially with your spouse or uh, yeah, with your... Uh, it can also show your in-laws sometimes. But either ways, uh, considering your spouse, your husband or wife, this is very important. Therefore, you really need to understand how to read the third from Venus, okay? Therefore, the third from Venus is uh, very crucial also when you are uh, doing compatibility matching sometimes. Why? Because the third from Venus will tell you how you view um, the experiences related to relationships. So, for example, if, if a person has a particular planet in third from Venus, the person um, is likely to gain, uh, suppose there's a benefit like Jupiter is there in third from Venus. So the person is likely to uh, gain more maturity after experiencing Venus, right? But suppose there's a malefic in third from Venus, then you, are, you may not experience, uh, I mean, you may experience misery, unhappiness, sorrow, suffering, and by that, you might become mature. But um, it could also happen if the malefic is in bad dignity from, third of, uh, from the third house where Venus is placed. You, you may not learn any lesson and you may just uh, go on creeping about relationships, right? Sometimes you will see a third house from Venus very badly afflicted. And people, uh, they have one breakup sometimes and then they decide, oh, relationships are of no good use. You know, you should not marry, you should remain single. Okay. And then for some time, they remain single. And then after some time, they're bored. They, they feel, oh, we need somebody, right? Life's too boring being single. So then they get into another relationship. And then uh, what happens? The same thing repeats. <laughs> and then they again become a philosopher, right? So this is what a debilitated malefic in the third from Venus can do. Now, of course, uh, you will be telling me that, oh, what you're saying works. What you're saying doesn't work. Because it's there in my chart and it doesn't work, right? Well, see, you have to understand everything in astrology has to be viewed from the purview of the entire chart. So if you do not uh, view the results of third from Venus in context of the entire chart, then uh, you may be misled and you might mislead others also, okay? So therefore, always check uh, the ascendant, you check Venus, uh, and even before you check Venus, you should check which house, the ninth from Venus, because the ninth from Venus is the creator of Venus, because the ninth house is like the father, right? So the ninth from Venus is like the father of Venus. Uh, as I said in my video, right, in uh, house of planets or houses from Venus, ninth, uh, that video is there, please go and watch, okay? So therefore, once you see what is there in the ninth from Venus, then you will understand what kind of an outlook does this person have 
or, or towards relationships or what are the things that this person might have learned from his or her childhood which has shaped their definition of uh, relationships and that's how the person is going to behave with you right so the ninth from venus is very crucial and the third from venus in this case tells you that you have certain conceptions about venus which is nine from venus then you have venus itself which shows your experience of experiences of uh, love romance relationships conjugal relationships long term relationships and then what what happens to you what what kind of change do you go through that is why the third house is the house of change right because it's the um, wealth from the fourth house fourth house shows stability fourth house shows things which are ground which you are grounded to right uh, but third house shows instability or or rather i could say it's the house of change right so if the third house is good it can show instability if it, uh, so sorry the third house is bad it can show instability and if the third house is good it can show change for you so therefore now uh, depending on which planet is in the third and which house that planet is ruling from the ascendant it can show uh, the kind of lessons and the way you communicate about love relationships in general so what happens when 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 it's the third house from the ascendant it shows communication in general so therefore the third from venus will also show communication about venus right so when a person is talking he or she is communicating what is do, what he is doing basically he is sharing his experience right and you are learning from those experiences right so that person becomes like the ninth house that's what is the 3 9 axis okay so a person speaking is in the third house and the person receiving is the ninth house so therefore if a person has a very strong uh, third house from venus the person can really be a very good uh, uh, can the person can really educate others very well about relationships and the person can actually uplift others uh, about uh, regarding their own relationships right of course this doesn't mean that they will uh, their own uh, married life or the love life will be very great necessarily that depends on the chart uh, that depends on where venus is where is the second lord where is the seventh lord where is the eleventh lord it also depends on you know where where is uh, the fifth lord the ninth lord because these two are the trines which you know help and support married life so therefore uh, once you uh, know what is going on in the third house from venus then you know which are the things that uh, and th this this can work even for relationships all right not only just, like just giving advice to others this can work within the relationship also you uh, the third house can from venus can also show what are the things that you really want to communicate uh, within within any relationship right that you go um, in so therefore if a planet is there in the third from venus and if you do not have a planet then you see where the third lord from venus is sitting so once you see uh, if a particular planet is so for example if uh, in rare cases suppose the uh, sun is there right uh, then uh, what happens is you 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 have to make sure that you really communicate quite well regarding the houses uh, the house which sun rules or regarding the things that sun uh, signifies in your horoscope right for example if sun is your uh, your ascendant lord uh, for example then uh, and sun also represents the self you know you your own identity so you will be you need to be very vocal uh, regarding uh your own identity right what you like what you don't like uh, within a relationship uh, that communication is very important for you so if moon is there uh, then it it can represent you know emotions emotional uh, compatibility and all this right emotional bonding right these things are very important so similarly uh, jupiter can show you know different values value systems now uh, which you think is very important for you what is right what is wrong what is good what is bad for you like uh, you seen the astrology comments i have this planet in that house is it good bad good bad good bad good bad so if your partner also shares the same then you might have a lot of chats like what's good what's bad right and then of course if you have uh, mercury then talks regarding finances or communication in general is very important okay 
of course uh, mercury will very rarely be there <laughs> but i'm just trying to explain you uh, how you should read this okay and this can also be seen in the navamsha chart that when you are really married then what happens right and especially malefics are there then uh, for example if rahu is there then it can be very important uh, for you to discuss things like you know infidelity or you know cheating or something like this if and if saturn is there you know it, it can be something related to neglect okay so if your spouse is neglecting you then that can really be painful and you might want want uh, to dis have a discussion regarding that okay so therefore in your partner's chart if he or she has any planet in the third from venus then please keep an eye and most probably that person would want to communicate with you regarding those things okay and if you do not communicate then things will pile up all right and you should take your chart what's going on in your own chart what is there in the third from venus so you should also communicate you should make it clear to your partner that these these are things i really want to communicate and communicate not just uh, verbally but it can be through any means you know like direct or indirect communication by any means of course so therefore once you know that this person is interested in communicating this primarily of course there can be communication at many levels on many different topics but this is the uh, topmost priority of the person then you know that yes this is something which i as a partner should really take care and your spouse should also be aware of what you have in third from venus okay and once uh, that area is cleared then then the fourth house is actually you know the second from the third house the it's like removal of instability so then there is stability okay so then on, only then you can go to the fourth house from venus otherwise Ah, it's all instability it's like um, it's like something which you think exists but it actually doesn't it's like building castles in the air so if if the third from your venus is not functioning properly right then your relationship could be very superficial uh, it it could lack substance and genuine love and care okay so therefore uh, you really have to analyze after seeing the ninth from venus check what's there in the third from venus okay and if you have a particular problem in life in general or if you have a particular problem in life in your relationships now this is hypothetical uh, this you might find you may not find but it's just a way of approaching things that suppose um, you have a lot of, of quarrels with your spouse regarding uh, certain things in life okay then you can actually check firstly what is that issue which planet represents that okay so if it is you know uh, related to finances then it can be you know jupiter or it can be mercury for example or it can be the sun also then uh, you need to check uh, who has that particular planet within your relatives within your uh, family circle or within your friends or in your office somehow if you can find somebody who has that particular planet in third from venus and um, now once you uh, find that then you can take advice from that person okay so if there's a lot of clash of ideals with your spouse then you can find somebody who has jupiter in third from venus in a good dignity provided and then you can take their advice because they will be very good at giving advice related to ideals so if somebody has a good jupiter from ninth uh, in ninth from venus all right so if you find you are really lucky right <laughs> otherwise uh, you have to do the homework yourself and you have to fix the communication you have to fix the problem all right so then uh, what happens is uh, the mind is clear because the third house is the subconscious mind so the third house uh, can show uh, similar to the 12th house 12th house shows what's there at the back of your mind right that's something which you are always thinking of but you are not acting the third house shows things which you are really ready to act on which you are just about to speak that's the house of speech you know like i am thinking of this video now i am speaking right so therefore 
it's like uh, the subconscious mind but sometimes it can also act as the active mind right it's like literally the presence it depends on the consciousness and the level uh, of your awareness the third house can be an active mind or the passive mind also right subconscious mind so therefore either ways you know that third house represents those things which you really want to be sorted so then uh, that's how you can uh, be aware of. That's how you need to use astrology, actually. Okay. So now don't think any planet like Saturn, Rahu, Ketu is bad in third from Venus. Don't think like this. Try to see what they are doing in the chart, right? Where is the Nakshatra Lord of Saturn placed? If Saturn is there, you know, if Ketu is placed, uh, confusions can, uh, you really need to dispel all confusions, okay? And if Mars is placed, then you really need to uh, dispel all things which make you angry sometimes, all right? And I think I've covered for the rest of the planets. But the thing is, um, you have to understand this in detail. You can't just say, oh, Saturn is in third from Venus. You know, neglect is very important for me to discuss. Why did you neglect me that day? Why did you not tell that to me? You know, it's like ignorance, neglect. Uh, that's very painful sometimes. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, the thing is, uh, you have to actually understand what that planet itself is doing. Just because he's Saturn, it doesn't mean he's bad. What if you uh, you are a Taurus Lagna or you are a Libra Lagna and that Saturn is a Yoka, okay? Or uh, what if you are Capricorn Lagna, right? Or what if you are Aquarius Lagna? It's the Lagnesh. So then things will be much more prominent, right? So then you have to see what that Saturn is doing. And is that Saturnian nature really good for you to discuss? So when malefics are there, it's very important that you, you really first understand, should you at all discuss that? Or sometimes if malefics are there, it might happen that you have to stay away from discussing that. Okay. So for example, uh, if you have Saturn and if you're uh, discussing neglect, it's very important, right? Because Saturn represents those things, those people who are neglected. So, Suppose once in a blue moon, you get neglected by your spouse, but maybe your spouse uh, is not doing that intentionally, okay? So if you keep discussing that always, then your spouse may feel that you don't like uh, him or her, or you don't trust him, or you think that uh, he or she is doing it uh, purposefully, right? So therefore, if malefics are there, it could be a wise decision, depending on the chart, and depending on your awareness, of course, to either discuss that or to not discuss that. Okay, Of course, you can give good lessons, but then uh, you really have to figure out should you at all be discussing that or you should never discuss that. Okay, Which means malefics can show certain things which by your karma, you both cannot change. Okay. So, for example, sometimes, um, and Saturn also represents, you know, cold behavior, you know, not wanting to reciprocate, not wanting to give uh, how much you have received, okay? So sometimes your spouse may be like that, that you give so much and you don't get so much in return, right? And that may be something which you cannot change, right? You cannot change your spouse altogether. So therefore, in such a situation, you really have to, uh, if, if you decide to stay within the relationship, then you will have to make peace with your destiny. That is all I can say, right? Because everybody will have flaws and everybody will have uh, challenges and everybody uh, will want to make their spouse the most perfect partner. But then that only exists in book, uh, but it doesn't exist in reality, right? So therefore, see what that benefic is doing, see what that malefic is doing. And I'm interested to know uh, in your chart, what planet do you have in third from Venus and what do you think is that planet doing and how is it impacting your outlook on relationships? Okay. Thank you very much for your patience. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him irrespective of what planet you have in third from Venus. And if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to down below. And if you want a consultation, you can always go to my website down in the description section. Thank you.